Welcome to part two of the 15 years of Faderhead music video throwback show. <laughs> I am Faderhead and in this show I'll be playing all my music videos from the last 15 years for you. Um, we already went over the first half yesterday and if you missed that uh, you can always check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Faderhead uh, where I will publish the whole show once the stream is done. Before every video, to make it more interesting, I'll be giving some background info and some context, and I will also put little text annotations into the videos themselves, uh, you know, whenever they come to my mind uh, when editing. So these annotations might fly by really fast, but you can definitely always stop the video and read them and then keep streaming afterwards if you want. With that said, I hope you enjoy this trip down memory lane, and let's get right to it. The idea for this video was really simple. Set up a red photo background, get all kinds of people to dance in whatever way they want. The only person in this video not dancing is me, but that's on purpose too. At that time, I was very annoyed by all the elite industrial dance groups of that time because they were bitching on each other and uh, about other dancers when they were really all terrible if you compared them to professional dancers of any style. So I figured I'd make a video about the idea that dancing should be fun and not a competition. Subconsciously, probably also because I <laughs> dance very badly uh, to songs like Ghostbusters in my spare time. Nobody should know this. Um, this was one of the songs that was a very big hit on YouTube and always gets the crowd going at my concerts, but there was almost zero club play because people didn't recognize Sean's voice and just, you know, left the dance floor. I still love the song and I still love the video.
Just dancers The story for this video is that the girl in the video starts seeing androids or aliens, whatever you want to say, uh, that are disguised as people. And then she sees them everywhere. She eventually gets so scared that she shoots herself and then it turns out that she's an android too. So. The song and the video were my commentary on people who complain about the inhuman system all the time, you know, the man, but the real problem in their lives are they themselves. And yes, I know from today's point of view, <laughs> that idea was not com communicated well in the song at all. I know that. You know, what are you going to do? The, the lead actress was my friend Mia again, who uh, played the lead role in the Black Friday short film. And uh, my performance scenes were once again shot in front of a wall at Zoe Bar. Thank you, Thomas. Simply because it was simple.
When the Freaks Come Out is probably uh, my favorite of my music videos, simply because the song still sounds good six years later and the video is a collection of many of the people who were very important to the success of Faderhead. And it also shows that, I don't know, goths can have a lot of fun and can be energetic audience if you put on a good enough show for them. Today, from looking back at it, I'm really glad that I always had my camera with me throughout all these years, especially in times when phones didn't have good cameras, because this video gives me really, really great memories every time I watch it. And I hope you enjoy it too. This is when the freaks come out.
This is only a lyrics video, but I think it actually works better that way because all the TV scenes paint a much better picture of the message than if I was raging around like an idiot on screen, you know? Uh, this is also one of these songs that absolutely kills life. I mean, it's, it's great. Having 10,000 people yell, no bullshit, and sticking their fists in the air at Mira Luna is an amazing moment that I will definitely never forget. And uh, I hope you come to a show and see it live and sing it live. No gods, no flags, no bullshit. Religious wars, man. That's people fighting over who has the better imaginary friend.
Escape Gravity was the first step after my decision to focus on writing more melodic and less screaming music, simply because I, I just had done the heavy stuff for over 10 years and um, I wanted to go in a more introspective direction, simply because uh, I was changing a lot as a person due to uh, therapy and <laughs> due to reducing all the vodka I was drinking, wasn't drinking that much anymore. For this video, I had no budget at all and we shot it in a friend of a friend's pool and that pool was 18 degrees Celsius. Don't know what that is in Fahrenheit and I was filming. I thought no problem, 18 degrees will be warm enough just to find out that after five minutes that water feels really cold. And um, Amy, the girl that's floating through the water in the video, is my friend's daughter who did an amazing job and was much, much better at tolerating the cold than me. Escape gravity. I'm standing here all night watching you dance And it feels so unreal to me I wake up reaching out but no one's here I realize it's just a dream Keep 
I didn't shoot any videos for four years after Escape Gravity because I didn't like the production process anymore. It was a lot of work and I didn't like that anymore. So for Asteria, I decided to try and have someone else do the video and me being super hands-off. It was really an exercise in letting go and letting someone else do the whole thing, including concept and shooting and editing. Unfortunately, I was quite unhappy with uh, the whole way this project was managed because uh, the director, who shall not be named, was uh, not on time. He was always busy with his other projects and he was not uh, you know, very responsive to input. And uh, my friend and keyboardist Jörg, who is in the video, uh, actually said on the day of the shooting, man, you are really taking this exercise and not taking over the director's job very seriously. I can't believe how hands-off you are. That's what Jörg said. And uh, from today's point of view, I really wonder if that was a good thing. Oh, well. My favorite part about the From His Broken Bones video is that I met CC, who is the dancer, who I organized, because, I don't know, the director was so late with everything that I started getting you know, preliminary stuff done, like finding dancers and stuff like that. And uh, From His Broken Bones is still one of my all-time favorite songs, but I'm not a big fan of the video. And that's mainly because so much potential was wasted. Oh, 
I did not know, I immediately felt that the song had a bit of a solar fake uh, vibe. So I grabbed my phone and I texted Sven to ask if he'd be up for singing on it. And luckily he said yes. And uh, this video is what I call a pandemic emergency video because COVID had hit the world a month before and Sven lives on an island near Ibiza, far away. So due to COVID and his own work schedule, it was simply impossible to do a proper video shoot on location. Then he was also moving houses on the island in the time before the release. And because I was already uh, grateful that he did the vocals for me, uh, I didn't want uh, to you know, push him. And I also didn't want to have a video of me singing and not have Sven in there. So I decided on doing a moody lyric video, which hopefully represents the vibe of the song. So 
This one was another <laughs> spontaneous pandemic video. Um, in times when you are restricted in your choices, you simply got to make do with what you have and uh, with what you can do. Especially if your budget isn't endless or in cases like this, uh, if the budget is actually zero. What people don't know is that you generally only lose money when you make singles. Producing, mixing, mastering the song costs money. Promoting it costs money. Making a video costs money. And you only sell very few singles. Uh, I'm not complaining about this, don't get me wrong, because it's all part of what you do as a musician. But especially when you do something spontaneous like this one, it's mostly going to be a no budget project. Anyway, a few months earlier, I had written what I thought was a very 2020s sounding uh, Halloween song. So I asked my friend Nikki in LA if she would be spooky <laughs> in a video for me. And I think she did a great job recording her scenes in her apartment because it was COVID on her phone. And then she sent them to me via Dropbox and uh, I edited them and I added the lyrics and it went really well. We went for a, an American horror story vibe and I'm very happy with how this spontaneous, you know, send a few DMs collaboration turned out. If you haven't heard the song yet, check it out now and maybe it's something uh, for your upcoming Halloween playlists this year.
I wrote this song and I thought I should ask Chris to do guest vocals because we have known each other uh, for a number of years now. He lives in the same town. So I emailed him and he immediately said yes. And by immediately, I mean within three minutes. This is one of those songs where everything just comes together from somewhere in the universe. And um, I am very happy that I managed to write one that fits the times as well as this does. Then as usual, <laughs> when it starts well, things take longer and nothing ends up being like you initially planned. Um, Chris was swamped with work for four to five weeks. And at that point, that was in September or something. At that point, it was already getting close to October where I wanted to release the Halloween Spooky Queens track. So I thought, okay, we do this in December. But uh, then I wrote and promoted the whole 27.7 Cyberpunk EP. So we pushed the release of Better to March of 2021. I also had a completely different idea for the look of the video, but we switched it at the last second. And by that, I mean, while we were driving to the location, to this recording setup. The video was shot by Leonard Schmidt and directed and edited by myself. And I'm very happy with how it turned out. If you want to know more about uh, the making of the song itself, what's musically in there, there is a very in-depth production breakdown on my YouTube channel.
This was part two of the 15 years of Faderhead music video throwback show. I hope you enjoyed it or got some interesting insights or some nostalgic moments. And uh, while doing this, I noticed that one of the main themes when making the show was that every video has a lot of problems and a lot of adversity during the making of it. And that's just the default situation. But you can really, really do a lot if you yourself put a lot of energy in it and if you enlist your friends and work together with many people. It's easy to become cynical when you get older, but uh, looking back at these first 15 years is really a good reason for me um, to be proud of what we accomplished together. So a big thank you to every single person who was involved with these videos or um, with me at Faderhead in this whole period. Hope to see you all somewhere down the line in the next 15 years. Because I know you're dark now.